Tonight's discussion is the vending phenomenon in Zimbabwe, issues and solutions. The starting point is that vending is a crisis that is directly linked, connected and caused by misgovernance, the collapse of the formal sector, the flight of capital, and also corruption. Yes. And we put this squarely on the foot of the zanu PF government. You realize that as the economy continues to not die, as companies continue to close, when I gave the statistics of the number of companies that were liquidated in 2014, 87 companies were liquidated in 2014. And he said more than 3,000 people lost their jobs in 2014. In fact, that, that with respect is a very conservative estimate. Because we are talking of people who lost their jobs in, within the formal sector, and particularly in commerce and industry. You realize that in the period that he has talked about, since the end of the inclusive government in July, June, July 2013, no more than nine financial institutions have closed down. And conservatively, no less than 1,000 bank employees or financial institution employees have since lost their jobs. And not only that, millions of dollars were lost as these nine or so financial institutions closed down. We all know that. Africa Asia Bank, which used to be known as Kingdom Bank, Interfin, there is this bank that was recently bought by Robert Mkoko. I don't know where he got the money for, 12.5 million. It didn't last 12 months. The bank had closed down. What was the name of the bank? Yes, Allied Bank, he called it. I can go on and on giving you statistics of financial institutions that have pegged up in, in the past 20, 21, 22 months since the MDC left the GMU, since the massive electoral fuss of July 31, 2013, <laughs> when ZANU-PF staged the mother of all rigging and literally set a new record in how rigging is, 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 is done this side of the equator, if not in the entire world. We are talking here of a situation where, as my brother pointed out, more than 80% of vendors are classified as young people, people below the age of 40. And about 12% of vendors are 50 years and above. These are people who are ordinarily supposed to be working towards their retirement. You don't want to see a young a, a woman or a man who is 55, who is 60, selling tomatoes and bananas on the streets. If you see that happening, then there's something fundamentally wrong with that particular society. I remember one day I was traveling along this road, Glenara Avenue South. It was very cold a few days ago, around 5:30 a.m. in the morning as I was dashing off to, to the airport. And I saw an, an old man, I estimate that old man should be, he can't be younger than 70 years, on his bicycle, and he was carrying newspapers. That means he was, uh, he's a newspaper vendor. And I estimated his age at about between 70 and 75. I, I felt so bad, I almost wanted to cry. The temperature was 6 degrees Celsius, it was very cold. And there's an old man who is ordinarily supposed to be sleeping at his house. But there he was, still trying to eke out a living. He's in his 70s. Then you tend to agree with the argument given by my brothers that there is something fundamentally wrong when you find that the bulk 
of the people who are supposed to be you know, pensioners are actually back on the streets as vendors. And also, the majority of the people who are supposed to be out there in the factories, in industry, working out there in industry, in the factories, clothing, manufacturing, factories, all of them, we find them lying in the streets. And this is just not a Harare Mulawa phenomenon. Go to all the cities, towns, and growth points of Zimbabwe. Go to Kekwe right now. Go to Chegutu right now. Go to Kandoma. Go to Shinoi. Go to Karoi. Go to Uchirundu. Go to Kariba. Go to, to, to Murewa. Go to Mpandawana. And then it seeks to benefit from that chaos. Examples have been given. A very academic, uh, very well researched examples have been given by my two colleagues, two brothers, who spoke before me. Of how Zanupi have created scales. We all know what is happening in all the major cities and towns in Zimbabwe right now. This is just not a rare phenomenon. They are busy creating or promoting or encouraging the establishment of informal settlements. What one might want to call squatter camps. They would deliberately encourage people to just build on land, as now said, we see what there is uh, no provision for roads, there is no provision for water reticulation, for sewage reticulation. They will simply say, if you go to Glenora now, Shibani share, I think between those of us, if Glenora, Glenora shopping center, Chitubu, you, you go anywhere, go to, to Araris, go to Zwarasekwa, go to Kamuzuma, go to Chitungiza St. Mary's. You notice that suddenly we, there is the sprouting of these informal settlements and they are directly and actively encouraged by the Zanpi activists to be where they are. I'll tell you why they are doing that. They are already planning to rig 2018. They are already <coughs> trying to ring fence all urban constituencies. They are all already trying to ring fence all urban constituencies so that by the time we get to 2018, people who would, I'll give you an example of what nine in, in Harare East, already they have registered 23,000 voters in what nine? What is that? Is that talking? These are statistics that are there. Go and go. I'm not saying I haven't smoked anything. I don't smoke now. This is, these are facts. They have registered about 23,000 voters in one ward. Harare East in Mawazi Street. There's what 8, what 9, and what 46. What 46 is Mapukutafara. The, the German are in Ozan. Why they took Mapukutafara and put it into what is tradition, what is supposed to be Harare East, I don't know. But what they did was when they did the, 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 the delimitation of uh, it was 2008. They, they wanted to, to dilute the MTC support in Harare East. So they created a new word. They, they took what 46 from what used to be Mapuku Tafara and they put what 46, which is 100% Mapuku and Tafara, they put it into, into Harare East. Now what they've done is there's that farm, Caledonia farm, which is now what they, they say is part of what 9. This is where they have where they have uh, registered 23,000 voters. The recent by elections of July, of June 10th, there is a guy called Mukupe. Did Mukupe have, I'm not sure how he it. <laughs> Mukupe, those 4,600 and something votes that he got, I think 99.99% they came from <laughs> Caledonia. <laughs> so you see that already they are planning, they, are, they, they don't care about, if you go to Caledonia now, it's a squat again. We tried to, to regularize, say, let, let us have order, let people register and come up with the registered uh, housing cooperative. We have our own people who can. We have a registered cooperative there. They went to council, could tip all land. They were cooperative registered way back in 2012. They were chased away. All of a sudden, a few weeks before the by elections, there were about three or four so-called cooperatives created by Mkupe and uh, my good sister Mavis Zumbo. Suddenly, people were, were being given my, my stands in, uh, 
in, in Caledonia. So already, this is not about empowering people. It's about making people poor and then making people dependent on Zanupia. Because these people, they are building Ziba, they are not saving the stands. Apanama facilities, as I said, Mvura, Emma roads, a sewage. And at the same time, these people, they are, they are, they are wholly dependent on Zanupia for Anna title. This is why Zanupia doesn't want people to have title deeds. This is why even 15 years after the so-called land reform, not a single person has been given title deeds for the piece of land in Akapio. I'll tell you the reason why they are, they are reluctant to give people title deeds. Because they know that once you have title deeds, you actually can approach a financial institution and borrow against the strength of your title deeds because you know you have to come to a real right. You have got a real right over an immovable property where you can actually go to the bank and say, do that or 5,000, or whatever, or whatever, or whatever, or whatever, flowers, against the security of my property. But all those people are coming down. They are not producing because how can you produce when you are not borrowing? Commercial farming is all about capital. I mean, there's no ways. You are going to be a successful commercial farmer who has no access to, to, to money. So this is why you find that this year we are supposed to have $300 million. The Zambia government is supposed to, to get $300 million to import maize because the maize harvest is only 49% of the national requirements. For the year. So we by the time we will get to July, August, September, we're going to be facing an unprecedented starvation, especially Kuma rural areas, areas like Mashingo, the Madhavan provinces, parts of the Midlands. And already this is a government that doesn't have a penny to import. Because the salary or wage bill of this government is $265 million per month. This is what they must pay for civil service. They have got a bloated civil service of about 550,000 civil servants. For a country now with 18 million, it's, it's unheard of. But this is unfair for you. They, like I said, they thrive on creating chaos. They want you, Mosana, to be poor. They want me to be poor. Because if I'm poor, I'm vulnerable. And what, once, I'm, once I'm vulnerable, then they can, I am dependent on the state. If you notice that all dictatorships are all over, they try on poverty. Look at that uh, young man who go North Korea. That's Kim, uh, Kim Jong Sung, whatever he calls himself. He's 31 years old, but he behaves like that. Where you find that 90% of the people are dependent on the state for, for their sustenance. So this is the problem that we have in this country. Yep, vending is a direct result of the collapse of the state. We are heading towards a situation where the state has virtually collapsed. The center can no longer hold. All these youngsters, all these middle-aged people, and all these old people at Tino Wonavari must treat vendors. This is why we have said as MDC, we have taken a policy position to say don't touch vendors. So when it comes to more, that is supposed to be the deadline, the so-called deadline. We have simply told vendors in Wabanguni, don't go anywhere. Where do these people, where does the Zanupia government want the vendors to go? There's no one who would want to spend all their day, their time. I just think some of the are in Julia Way, or Nelson Mandela, or Robert Mugabe Street. That is a direct sign of poverty. So we are saying to the Zanupiev government, this is your skunk, you better skin it. Yes. So the long and short of it is that, ladies and gentlemen, comrades, if we are going to say my vendors guide you moved, this is not create a mass. It's like saying to a patient that will work, Somebody is admitted to hospital, he or she is suffering from tuberculosis or something. Doctor, I'm not going to do this because we are not going to do it. But it's not going to do it. 
This is what Zambia is doing. And I'm happy that one of my brothers here said, let us focus on curing the cause of vending, the, co the cause of the disease, and not the symptom. So as long as we don't address issues of governance, as long as we don't address issues of creation of jobs, as long as we don't address issues of corruption, then we are going to have this issue. In fact, all of us, by the end of the, I'm sorry, in the next six to 18 months, by the time we get to 2018, just let us including my brother, good son. <laughs> You'll be vending right outside this hotel. Because the, the situation is that desperate. So I, I'm told that my time is running out, but I could go on and on. I've deliberately taken a political stance because I thought it's not my business to give you the statistics. My academics occupy my statistics. I'm wearing a political head. I'm, I'm here as a, as a politician, not, not as a, a lecturer or some college or some university. So I'm just going to tell you as it is. So the situation, ladies and gentlemen, is that we, 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 we have a situation where we have an irresponsible government. The only good thing about this government is that it is not going to last. They are self-cannibalizing. They are chasing each other away from government. You can see Gunia is so happy. He literally made sure that Jonas Darbo got fired. <laughs> <laughs> you can see how happy he is. <laughs> no, not that we, we care whether Jonas Darbo is fired, but we, we don't give a damn. But all I'm saying is this. We, 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 are, we, are, we, are looking, we are looking at a situation where at the rate that this government is running down, what is left of this economy? I can bet you my bottom dollar that by the time we get to 2018, there will be no Zimbabwe to talk about. Because they are talking of so-called mega deals from the Chinese, from the, the Russians. I'll tell you one thing, the Chinese are some of the smartest business people in the world. I could not announce that business before I'm telling you. I'll tell you, it, the, your average Chinese is more capitalist than your average American. A Chinese will not give you money for nothing. This is why Mr. Mugabe was in China for the state visit, if you remember, August 2014. That's almost a year ago, did How many mega deals were signed? I counted them, there were supposed to be 24 agreements I can sign you. I can keep you, I've got the records. 23, 24 agreements were signed in China. August 2014. This is the end of June 2015. If we see anything, Chinota is that so that well publicized state visit to Beijing by Mr. Mugabe has brought anything. Nothing. The Russians were here, the Russian foreign minister was here sometime mid last year. They were supposed to have uh, signed the mega deals. And I'll tell you one thing about Russia. Russians, they, will, they are good at selling you weapons. They will sell you the AK-47 rifles. They will sell you bombs and mortars. They will sell you anti-air missiles. They won't bring you investment. Tell me one country in the world, you know, the Agata partner in Russia, you get industrialized. So with those kind of friends, who needs enemies? With those kind of friends, who needs enemies? Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a real crisis. This is why we say that if I was a Zanubi effectivist today, I'll go to Mr. Robert Mugabe, I'll tell him, you have heard your bit, Mr. Mugabe, please can you step down? Can you save this nation? Thank you very much.